Welcome to Subramani. Uh, why is timing the market so difficult? <coughs> it is not just because the market uh, is difficult to judge and gauge, but it is also our own mental makeup of what is happening in the market which makes it so difficult. So let us look at the facts. Uh, let's go back to uh, March 2019. March 2019, uh, you saw what was coming. You saw there is uh, coronavirus uh, from China, uh, and uh, that is going to hurt the economy of the world. Lot of people are going to die. There is going to be panic all around, and therefore the market is going to fall very good uh, logic yes you were right and so you were lucky that you sold in the month of march right at the beginning of march uh, or uh, somewhere at that time you guessed that the virus is going to be so bad i mean i had information about the virus going to be very uh, uh, severe and cruel uh, before the market sell off so assume for a minute that you had sold off and the market fell say 35%. So you got protected, you had 100 rupees worth of equity, you sold off completely. And the same thing was now available at 65 rupees. Right, would you go and buy? Uh, in April would have you bought? Let us say in December 2019, you thought the market was too high. So March 2020 was a great time to be buying. So were you buying or were you selling? Maybe you sold and after that you saw a 35% fall which happened and you were thrilled, you were patting yourself and said, wow, smart, I made this move and I bought it. Now, would you have bought in April? Remember all that which happened. Uh, US uh, put what some 2 trillion package, uh, India dropped interest rates, all over the world people reacted to it, right? People started watching more Netflix. Uh, <clears throat> there were more, uh, a lot of broking happening, a lot of people coming and buying and selling shares because they had nothing else to do, they were confined to their homes. So suddenly you had <clears throat> Nasdaq actually going up, but let us not talk about Nasdaq, let us talk about India. There is a 30% fall, 35% fall in the market. Would you have bought in April? <clears throat> Very difficult because in April you would have said, oh, the Fed is pumping money, RBI is pumping money, they are talking up the market. Actually, with such a uh, deep uh, coronavirus in the going to hurt, I think the market is going to be down further. So, uh, when the market went up in maybe April, May, maybe a little bit in June, maybe it recovered 30% of the, maybe 50% of the fall that had happened, would you have got in? The answer is, it's very difficult to justify any of these moves in the short run because even if after a 10% fall, if you had bought it back, that was not a bad deal at all. But then after that, market fell another 25%. So you would have felt cheated saying, I moved in too early. So you may not have moved in at all because you would have waited, waited, waited and then in September, it hit an all-time high. So your 35% gain which you had on paper was lost, right? So why does this happen? This happens because we know that uh, loss hurts uh, twice as much as uh, the pleasure of profits. So uh, if you have lost money, that is more hurtful. And so which means let's say the shares, uh, your 100 rupee portfolio fell to 65. Uh, and in April, you felt very good that it had come down to 65. You were thrilled and now you were not happy with that 35%. You wanted more. So you waited. So in April, when it went up, you said, oh, this is a dead cat bounce, uh, Fed printing, RBI printing, uh, FIIs are not buying. It is only the mad domestic SIPs which are going on. We should not be buying because the market is bound to come down. Fair enough. All your perfectly correct judgments, which may not have been right in the in retrospect, but it was a perfectly legitimate thought to have in April. So you waited through April, you waited through March, it didn't go, uh, sorry, you waited through uh, May and uh, then you didn't know what to do, right? But you were right because so many millions of Americans filed for bankruptcy, people did not have a job, the US government was throwing money at people, uh, Indian government was giving a lot of concessions, India had not yet started giving free grain and people thought, oh, people at the bottom of the pyramid will get wiped out, right? So all those fears were there. 
the uh, problem is after the 35 percent fall and you are continuing to wait the next fall did not come. So, you had to at some stage you, you waited from 100 to 65 you did not buy at 65 it went up at 75 you had to buy that is a trader mentality saying I was wrong the market is right. So, at 75 you should have bought, but for a typical average investor buying at 75 would have been oh god I missed 10 percent I should have bought at 65. So, that regret of not buying at 65 will not allow you to buy even at 75 that is the problem with the short term thinking right. Cashing out and sitting on the sidelines may sound very logical in the retrospect today if you look at the charts and say this is where you should have sold and this is where you should have bought hindsight right 2020 everybody has that perfect vision right. So, that is not true buy back too soon and there is pain that you oh god I missed it I got only 10 percent somebody else has got 60 or 35 percent right the full 35 percent fall that they have got they bought only at 65 I bought at 85 and I got only 15 percent or things like that. Uh, maybe you when you buying it back let us say you sold at 100 you bought it back at 70 then you for, uh, saw it fall another 5 percent you felt miserable about it and you were not convinced that 70 was a good price to buy simply because you thought oh my god this was a dead cat bounce I am I bought at the top of the next downturn what would have you done or possibly you would have sold again at 70 and then what did it go to 65 you would have felt thrilled wow this is fantastic this is exactly what I wanted to do. And at that stage you had no equity at all and then it started going up uh, out of your 35 percent gain 5 was recovered 10 was recovered 20 was recovered 25 was recovered and then you did not know what to do right. So, you have got to uh, understand that uh, I mean obviously losses hurt more than gains and so uh, over long periods of time uh, equity will give you between anything between 12 to 20 percent kind of a return. Uh, this is on an average so there will be years in which you get bad returns in year, years in which the market falls 30 40 percent you can be sure when the market falls 30 40 percent in the next 2 3 years it will try to make it up also to the average to the mean right reversion to the mean will happen for a portfolio may not happen with a single share. But uh, with lower interest rates and more people in the market and more traders maybe the returns will go down from 12 to 20 percent to something like uh, 9 to 13 14 percent. So, there these are two possibilities which can happen market returns go down generally. but largely market will give positive returns and it will be far better than the interest rate. So, if interest rates go up good chance that equity returns will also go up. So, do not bother too much about the macro and say what is happening somebody is pumping in money market prices all that. So, you do not have to worry too much about that you will need to understand what to do. So, let us say you have uh, your financial planner has said you require 3 crores for your retirement and you have 10 out of 10 crores 9 crores is in equity and 1 crore is in debt ok. Um, for simplification I am assuming you have no gold, but that is a some that is just an assumption you have to be ready that one day the market can fall 50 percent. So, assuming theoretically that you are equal to the market your portfolio will come down by 9 crores will become 4 and a half. So, your net worth will be 4 and a half plus 1 5 and a half remember your planner has just said you need 3. So, you have a surplus already in spite of the fall. So, therefore, if you are in a position where the fall does not bother you you are perfect in your asset allocation, but if you are in a position where the uh, where you will be hurt when the market falls uh, 50 percent then maybe you should do some reallocation because markets can fall market I have seen the market fall 50 percent during just after harsher days right 92 to 93 from 4200 to 4300 the market did fall. I think uh, after 4200 I have also seen the market at 2200 so that is the kind of fall which we all have seen it has happened. So, at that stage you have no clue when to uh, whether to buy, buy, but the fact is you need only 3 and you have 4 and a half 
you don't need to panic should you then remove that 1 crore from debt and put it in equity in an ideal world yes but practically you will not feel like you will say at least that 1 crore is protected i can live off it etc etc you will not mentally be ready to uh, make the necessary changes right so now you realize how much risk you can take how much risk do you need to take based on all that you decide whether to pump in another 1 crore from debt into equity or just stay tight or say oh i had this house i sold it off i got some money so shall i push it into equity whatever all arguments are right you have to see what works for you and uh, none of us are answerable to anybody else for the money that we manage for ourselves right thank you